How do we end up creating a function? How do we use it in our program? To create a function, we need to use a new keyword called DEF, that's short for define. Then we need to put in our function name. Function names always start with a lowercase letter. You can actually create a function name with an uppercase letter, but it just isn't ever done. To start off with, I've got a function called volume sphere. I'm going to use that as my first base function, and it's going to calculate and print out the volume of a sphere. I've got def volume sphere. After the function name, we need to put in parentheses, and then we put in indented one tab stop the code for our function. I'm going to create the variable pi. I'm going to set volume equal to 4 times pi times um, our radius of, let's say, 3, and raise that to the power of 2. Then I'm going to print. the volume. By itself, this actually doesn't do anything. If I run this program, hit F5, run it, and nothing happens at all. Defining a function is like telling the computer, if I tell you how to figure out the volume of the sphere, do this. But without calling the function, you're telling the computer how to do it. You're not telling the computer to actually do it. To actually call the function, you need volume sphere and then open close parentheses. Now when I run the function, it'll go ahead and print out the volume of the sphere it is 113, and I can even do this multiple times if I want. This will call the function four times without me having to repeat the code that I've typed in for what the volume is of a sphere is. Now let's go ahead and review this a bit. This is the keyword says that we've got a function coming up. This is the function name. It runs the same sort of requirements as a variable name. You can't start it with a number. You should always have it start with a lowercase letter, really similar to what a variable is. And you can do camel case, you can have underscores in there, you can have numbers in there as long as this is not the first one. You must have parentheses. Well, I'm kind of messed up there. You must have parentheses and a colon after that. We'll figure out what goes in the parentheses here in just a little bit. All the code, one tab in. As soon as you untab stop it, you are out of that function and any time that you tab back in, you're not going to be back into that function. So all the code that goes in the function should be tabbed one tab stop in or more to tell the computer that we're inside of this function. Furthermore, all functions should be at the top of your program. Imports, if you've got an import, that should be even higher than that. And then your code for your main program should go after that. So don't do code and then a function down here. Uh, that's no good. Do all your functions up at the top. The computer will let you define a function down below, but it's really bad form and practice to do that. Great, we've got a function that will calculate the volume of a sphere, but it's not really all that useful. What we would really like is the ability to calculate the volume of a sphere of any radius. And we can do that by putting in what's called a parameter. This is a new variable that I've just created right here. I'll call it radius. I call this just is any variable name and corresponds to all those rules that's common for me to have with a variable name. And I'm going to replace this 3 with radius. And I'm going to say the volume, fancy this up a bit, Now I can call these with a different value for the radius. And when I run it, all of a sudden I've got a much more flexible function working on because I can pass it any sort of radius and I've abstracted out the radius and allowed me to use that for any radius. 
a really common mistake when doing this type of thing though is if I were to say create a function that takes in the radius and have the radius be 5 is for someone to do this. If I were to ask you this in a test situation, have a function, have it take in the radius and print out the radius of 5, this would work, but if I were to pass in a radius of 15, what's going to happen is the computer will set, aha, uh -huh, passing in a 15, so a radius is going to equal 15. And the next line of code says radius is 5. Oh, okay, well I'll just ignore that 15 and now we'll do it with 5. Basically the function will ignore whatever you pass in and overset it with 5. So remember, if you're going to take in a parameter, you set the parameter's value here where you call it, not here in your function. So if you've got a variable up here, you don't want to set it to a value down here because you're setting that value this value is taken and plopped right in there into the parameter for the function. I can even pass in a variable if I want for i in range 20. And then I can take that function and pass in i. And whoops, I can see that I need to go ahead and remove that line that I talked about that was bad. Now down here in the program, I've got the radius from 0 on up to 20. If you're a math major and you want to figure out a lot of different values for a particular function, you can do something like this and not have to rewrite the code and it makes things a whole lot easier when you're working with math and you need to do a lot of different calculations. Even with this function and the ability of me to put in any sort of radius, it's still kind of limited. If I wanted to take this radius and use it in a different calculation, or if I want it to do anything other than print out in this particular format, this function doesn't do me a whole lot of good. I can return a value and then do anything I want with it as a function, and this is a little bit more common when working with functions that do calculations. And that is to use this new keyword called return and return a particular value. In this case, if I were to run the program, absolutely nothing prints out because I've taken out the print statement. And what I need to do is instead capture that value and print it out. Now I'm back to printing out everything. And the way this works with this return statement, I've got a value. I could actually take the entire function and put it in here, but it's going to take the value, say that it's like 100, and then it will, where this function is, it'll basically take that function, replace it with 100, and put it into the variable v, because I've got an assignment going on there. And then I can print out v. Other versions of this that I can do, I could take this line out and paste it here. This still works because the computer will take this, evaluate it into like a particular value, like 100, and then return the value of 100. This will make your code just a little bit shorter. I actually like the prior version because it's really obvious that I'm actually calculating the volume and I could always print out the volume or take a look at that variable in a debugger before it's returned, a little bit easier than this particular version, but it's just sort of a style issue as to which people prefer. The other thing that I could do, I could take this and paste it in here. This will actually call the function, and the result will be printed out. So if I do this, it's going to take this particular volume sphere, it's going to run the calculation, and then whatever this returns is going to go in here, let's say it was 100, and then it'll print out 100. This is a little bit shorter, but sometimes shorter isn't always better because it's not quite as clear as what's going on. I happen to prefer the lengthier version like this, but either one works. Again, that kind of goes to a particular style issue. Now, if you are not going to calculate the volume of a sphere, but instead you are going to do the volume of a cylinder, 
you have two parameters and you, you can take in two parameters from a function by using the comma. In this case I've got the volume of a cylinder with radius and height and that particular formula is going to look like the following. The volume is going to equal 2 times pi times the radius times the radius plus the height and I'll return the volume. And instead of calling volume sphere, I'll call volume cylinder. And let's call it with a height of 5. This gives you an example of being able to show how you can enter two parameters. Note that the parameters are order based, so I will go in for the radius, 5 will go in for the height. You have to have two parameters. You can't call volume cylinder with only I. That would not work. You can't call volume cylinder with three parameters or zero parameters. The computer will give you an error if you try. And as much as we might like, just the way things work, volume, when you return, you can only return one value. This value will go into the variable right here. I could return a list if I wanted. But I can't do volume and then comma some other variable like x. That wouldn't work. Since you're taking the result and you're putting it into a variable, it expects only one particular value to be returned. And you don't have that limitation with what goes in, but you do with what comes out. But the neat thing about using a return value for a function is that I can continue to do other math on it. Like for instance, in this case, I could take volume cylinder and the result of this function and take it times 6. If I wanted to get, for instance, the volume of a 6-pack or do some other calculation with the results of that function, it's a lot more flexible if I just return the value and then let the program decide what it wants to do with that value.